Good morning and welcome to another series where I visit a lot of Japanese chain restaurants. Today we're starting at Komeda Coffee which is a really popular coffee chain here and they're known for having budget options and really cozy style environments and I'm here really early in the morning because they have a thing called a morning service where if you buy a hot drink you can literally get a piece of toast and egg included for free. And that's pretty good value. So I've got this coffee and it's called white coffee in English, but it's basically coffee with lots of milk. Ah, and they make it really hot here, how I like it. I've just got like a piece of Japanese white bread, which if you aren't familiar with, it's called shokuban and it's really fluffy and really thick. Like, look at this. It's so thick and you can choose a topping. So you can either choose butter or you can get something more Japanese and sweet, which is sweet red bean. And I actually got this as a side because I want to show you guys a Japanese style breakfast. Before I forget, I've also got an egg. Let me give this a try. It's actually my first time having it at Komeda. I've had it at a lot of other Japanese cafes before though. I took a big bite. The azuki paste is like cold. So it's like kind of a nice refreshing hit because the toast is still warm. And I'm glad I got butter because butter and azuki is also really good. Ah. Mm. I forgot to mention for this whole set, it was only 600 or 700 yen if you want the extra big coffee. So it's pretty good for breakfast on the go out of the cafe. And they do have like plugs. So if you want to like work or charge while you're on the go, have a place to do it. There are over 300 locations in Japan, so you'll probably come across one of them. And if you're looking for like a quick bite, I highly recommend it. But I need to keep going and find more chain restaurants, so let's go. I'm very excited because today is the first time I've ever come to Ichiran Ramen, which is one of the most popular ramen chains in Japan, especially for foreign tourists. It is so popular that you are going to be waiting about an hour to two hours to get a bowl of this ramen. And there's something really unique about Ichiran, which I didn't realize, is the privacy. You are literally seated at these private booths and there's no contact with the staff. You just sit down and they have this little tatami style window, which they'll flap up and then they'll serve their ramen. Right here today, I am actually in the Osaka location, which is special because they use a broth that doesn't use pork. And I can't eat pork, so it's perfect for me, and that's why I haven't come, even after living in Japan for six years. It looks amazing. The presentation is beautiful. It's in this black box, which is not typical of ramen because ramen usually comes inside of a bowl without a lid. And I'm just, I'm just so excited and so impressed by the privacy. It's, it's like being in another world, and I feel like I'm a tourist in Japan again. Um, I don't know where my chop. Oh, here are the chopsticks up the top. It is piping hot. I can see the steam coming off of this. Oh yeah, this is tasty. It's got a hit of spice. They have their own specialty spice, um, which they do sell. <laughs> you can hear them saying "irashaimase," which is basically "welcome." Wow! And I love this place because you can actually customize your ramen dish entirely when you arrive after you've ordered from the ticket machine. Because typical of a ramen restaurant, you're going to order from the ticket booth, and then you will get to customize your entire dish with this piece of paper where you'll circle things like. How much dashi do you want inside? How thick should the broth be? How much spice? How much garlic? And how thick should the noodles be? And I love thick noodles. I'm not a fan of th thin ones, and they really do thick ones here. It's awesome. Since it was my first time, I wanted to go with the most basic ramen on the menu, so I went for the classic one. It was about 1,100 yen, but I went for a side of egg. And it was really interesting because when it came out, I got a little you know, piece of plastic paper which said the egg is hard to peel and it's rarely the case that there's an issue with the quality but if you don't like it, you can get another egg. So they're really, really making sure the customer has a good experience and there's honestly all these small details. I'm sitting here and I'm just observing it while I was waiting for my ramen to come out. They have these little wooden boards that are on the side of your table 
it's actually crazy because here it says you can make a request at Ichiran without speaking. So you literally just call them here with a button that's right in front of me. It says call us. And then you pass them this wooden block and then you can get your request. I wanted to give the beef a try because apparently this is what most of the ones come here with and it's recommended so that's really tender really soft it kind of resembles um gyudon that thin sliced beef it's really sweet as well mm. also had their original tea so i couldn't resist the opportunity to give it a try mm. tastes like black tea yeah, interesting. Tea is also a surprising choice with ramen. They did sell beer and orange juice, <laughs> so I feel like there's some atypical things here. If you are thinking of coming to Ichiran, I highly recommend coming off peak time. So don't go at lunch or dinner. Go like kind of 3 p.m., 4 p.m., or really early in the morning if you're down for morning ramen, because that is a thing in Japan. I finished all of my first round of noodles, but still have a reasonable amount of soup left. So I'm thinking to do a half size kayadama, which is extra noodles. And it's actually my first time seeing half size. Usually it's just one size and it's only 150 yen. Pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull off one of these sheets and I'm gonna fill it in again. What are my two extra things? I have some half size kayadama and some nori. I've noticed there's a message at the bottom of this ramen box, and I'm just so full. Like I don't know if I can finish the soup. I can just I can just make it out. And that was Ichiran. Let's go to our next spot. I wanted to announce that I have started a Patreon and I'm super excited because I'm going to be sharing lots of behind the scenes information, live streams, and you guys can contribute to how the videos turn out because today, my Patreon community, you guys voted for Abura Soba and that's where our next location is. So let's go and eat some oily noodles. Today I want to introduce a different type of noodle dish here in Japan. You've heard of ramen, you've heard of soba and udon, but this is abura soba. And what's unique about this is that it's basically a soupless dish. And so we've got these thick yellow noodles. When you order it, it comes with a few toppings, but once you mix it, you actually add in a few sides like vinegar. And they have two choices. We have this chili style vinegar and then a normal vinegar. And if you know me, I love my vinegar. And this location I'm eating at today is Tokyo Abura Soba and there are tons of locations across Tokyo and they're quite small actually. There's only about like 10 seats or so and there's often lines in the evening because this place is like a late night joint. So if you come late in the evening, you're going to be lining up. But enough, my dish is here and I really want to dig in. So, it's like this. Time to put my vinegar inside. Woo! I'm going to go a little light in the beginning and I'm going to add a little bit of this chili oil. It looks like I have some onion as well that I can add. And of course, while I'm eating, I can add more. And the best way to enjoy abura soba is by mixing it all together. So. so inside here, there is a little bit of sauce hiding at the bottom. But then I also have some seaweed, some menma, which are like bamboo shoots, as well as a half boiled egg. Wow. And it's steaming hot. This is a warm dish. I love this so much. It's got those kind of rich flavors that I really enjoy. And they're very like vinegary, of course. Mm, it's completely different to ramen. Completely different to soba. I'm actually gonna add a bit more vinegar because I don't think, I was too light on it, but that looks like a lot. I'm scared. One of my favorite things about abura soba is not only the flavor, ooh, that just sprayed everywhere, but um, the chewiness of the noodles. It's almost similar to tsukemen, which is a noodle dish that you dip in a broth. Mm. I think I added the perfect amount of vinegar. Mm -mm -mm. And if you're wondering how much this costs, this is about $9.90 and this was like one of the most standard ones, but you can get other sizes, which for the large size, it was the same price, but if you went extra large, it was about 100 yen more. But then they also had some with like 
spicy miso and you can get fancy toppings. I even saw parmesan as a topping. I'm just a little curious about that. I don't know about parmesan. I feel like, you know, the sharpness of the cheese could add a bit of interesting flavor to it, but uh, I think I appreciate the most basic one because it's like what they're known for. This dish actually originated in Western Tokyo and it's been around for a while now, but one thing that's always been a bit interesting is that the name, although it translates to literally oily noodles, it's not that oily really. It's just like the sauce, but there's a few theories as to why it got that name and one of them was because it had to differentiate itself from skimen. The reason Sarah brought me is because I am actually a connoisseur of apuro soba. It is my number one most underrated Japanese food. And this is really good. My favorite flavor, actually, they don't have it here, is shio lime, which is salt lime. That one's really, really good. So if you ever see that flavor, that's my recommendation. So I was asking Sarah, I was like, Sarah, why is it called soba when it's not really soba noodles? They're like ramen noodles. And you're the soba expert. So I was wondering if you knew. Good question, Alyssa. Mm -hmm. Fun fact is that I don't have the answer. <laughs> so please let us know down below if you know why. <laughs> One thing I will mention is you will leave this restaurant feeling very full and a bit heavy, so don't come here if it's the morning. <laughs> I'm at the McDonald's of Japan. This is Moss Burger and it is everywhere here. You'll see it on the corner of every street and every prefecture and it is very different to an American food chain because of course they've got burgers, which I've got here. This is actually a soy patty, but they have something really interesting on the menu here, which is a rice burger. And it's got yakiniku inside and everyone loves yakiniku. So I had to order myself this as well as some chips. But these aren't any chips. These have onion rings inside as well as, you know, the classic Coke, which in Japan is an oolong tea. <laughs> And for this entire set, I've only paid 1,200 yen, which is pretty reasonable value if you ask me, because I got an extra on the side. So I'm gonna dig in, but I think I wanna start with this yakiniku rice burger, because this is something you can't find anywhere else in the world, I think. And I love how generous they are. Like, look at all that lettuce. Mm. Lettuce, tastes good. Dojimasu. Mm. This is really good. They have nailed it. Like yakiniku with rice is already such a good combination, but then you put it in a burger with some lettuce, you cannot go wrong with this. Oh my God. I've actually had this before because of Moss Burgers in Australia. And I've been to their Queensland shop a few times and I dragged like my family there. Who would have thought? Rice in the burger form? Mm. And if you're wondering like how they stick the rice together, it's basically like rice that is put in like this circular patty shape and then they put soy sauce on it. Cause it's like a little bit brown on the outside, like this. And then they're frying it, like on the hot plate side of the shoe. And the flavoring of that is just so saucy and so good. I think it's almost like on par with a regular burger. Like regular burgers are good, but this is also like pretty decent. And also on the side, this costs like 490 yen. So if you just want this, it's pretty good. I got so distracted, I forgot to eat my beautiful onion ring. Like, look at this. It looks a little small. Like, I don't eat a lot of onion rings, but mm -hmm, the onion just fell out of this. I know that feels really salty and greasy to me, so not exactly my favorite, but I don't consume a lot of onion rings, so maybe I'm just not informed enough. But I'm gonna try the chips. This is very different to like the McDonald's chips, which are like the small, like crispy fries. This is like a lot more like potato inside, which I do like. I approve of these fries. Look, I'm becoming more American every time. Like, I'm saying fries now. These are chippies to me. Where's the chicken salt? Where are my Aussies out there? Give me some chicken salt. <laughs> In Japan, sometimes you can get like shoyu butter flavoring, but not today. These are just normal salted. This oolong is just so good. Like, I feel like it's just a good palate cleanser because it's kind of like, I don't know, a bitter flavor. And it's healthier than Coke, so I really, I wish like overseas they had that too. But I'm going on to the burger. On the menu here they also have meat options, but I wanted to show you guys that there's also soy ones available. And this is so cheap. This is only 280 yen. I think that's really cheap. Oh, actually if you get cheese, which I did, it's 300 yen. But inside we have some tomato sauce, some onion, as well as cheese and the soy patty. Is that gonna 
There was a little bit of mustard hiding underneath, which I'm a big fan of mustard, so it's welcome. I don't know, I really like it. It's really affordable, simple. Is it the best burger in the world? No, but it's like something you can just pick up if you're on the go. It's like kombinis. Better than a kombini burger, because they have them at the kombinis here. Mm. I'm just eating this rice on its own. Like, it's so good. Before coming to Moss Burger today, I wanted to look into a little bit of history about it and it started here in Japan, so it's a Japanese chain, but it is the second biggest here after McDonald's Japan. You might be wondering, why is it called Moss Burger? Well, it's a backronym, which that's a new word I learned today, and it means, right here on the cup, mountain, ocean, sun. Stand tall as the mountain heart, wide as the ocean, with passion, bright as the sun. That is so deep. Thank you, Moss Burger, for inspiring us here every day. Another great thing about Moss Burger is they actually have a lot of like dietary options. They have some veggie stuff as well as vegan stuff and they sell it in supermarkets here too. Which is very rare because even McDonald's Japan doesn't have anything that's like vegetarian friendly. So they're kind of like forward thinking in that sense. Maybe it comes from their slogan, Mountain Ocean Sun. I was too tempted by the very Japanese item on the menu. It's Oshiruko, which is red bean in a soup with mochi, which is these white rice balls. And I mean, you would never find this in like a Western chain. So I thought this was really cool. And it comes in like a little cup where you can sip it. Ah, that is so sweet. This is a very winter dish. And right here in Japan, as you can see, it's the cold time of year. So I wonder if in the summer they have something like kakigori. I could imagine that being on their menu. For Oshiruko, this isn't too bad. It wasn't on the cheaper side. It was 390 yen. I don't know, I can buy a burger for less than that. My soy burger was less than that, so, you know. I don't know about you, but at the end of every burger now in winter, maybe I just need an Oshiruko to wrap up my meal. This is my first time introducing a family restaurant, which you might not have heard of before, but it is a Japanese style of really budget restaurant. I don't know how to explain it other than that, but they have really like easy to eat dishes and they're really cheap and super affordable and they're literally everywhere across the country. Right now I'm at one called Size Area, known as Size Air amongst all the cool kids, and they sell Japanese style Italian. Now you can interpret that how you like, but it is not very authentic. They have things like black squid pasta on the menu, they have some attempt at margarita, but that being said, I think it's still quite tasty. I'm starting off my meal the Italian way with some melon soda. Which, as we all know, the Italians drink on the daily. This place is so cheap for unlimited drinks. You just have to pay 190 yen. And you can sit here for like eight hours and just keep drinking and drinking. Of course, there's like other things other than this green drink. You've got Coke, you've got ginger ale, but they also have tea, coffee. While waiting, make sure to enjoy the lovely aesthetic of this Italian restaurant. And when you order, you have to write it on a paper like this, so it's a bit confusing. And then ring the bell. Only about 10 minutes after ordering, or maybe less, my food is already here. And today I'm going to be eating something called a meat goria. And I'd never heard of it until coming to Japan, but it's basically like this rice dish. There's rice at the bottom and they layer it with like cream sauce and cheese. It's so cheap. This only cost me 300 yen. And I usually pair it with these things called like focaccia and they're basically like these puffy bread and they used to do it as a set but now you have to buy it separately. When I was a university student in Japan I would I would eat this like weekly. Honestly it was so good and it's so cheap. I haven't been here for ages because I have a bit more of an income now as a, an adult but 360 like, yen for this and then I have unlimited drinks. That's insane. All right, time to dig in. I love these. I used to sometimes just come and order these because they're so tasty and I love bread. It's so good. I could not believe this was 300 yen. I still can't believe it was 300. It was probably like 250 like six years ago. Okay, this is just as good as I remembered it. I don't think I've had this for like a year. It's basically, I don't think this is very Italian, um, but there's like yellow rice and then there's a layer of like meat um it's not really meat it doesn't feel like meat it's more like a red sauce and then they have white sauce which is like the creamy part so of course japanese people love their rice so that, i feel like that's where the rice is coming from how authentic is it i don't know how do they make their profit like i don't understand i could not make this at home for this price you're mainly going to find a lot of families here or students 
and they're gonna come here and just like study all day. So a lot of the booze will just be taken by people sitting there with their laptops because they've got free Wi-Fi. And it's, I guess it's like a really cheap place to come and use if you want to study or just hang out. I feel like I never leave this place feeling like dissatisfied. Although there are a lot of haters. There are so many people like I've met in Japan, they're like, I can't go there. They're like stubborn about it, but no. I think you should, everyone should try it at least once. You need to lower your expectations. You can't come here thinking you're gonna get Italian. It's Japanese Italian. If you come here at peak like dining hours, lunch or dinner, there's probably gonna be a line as well, so be careful. If you come in off times, it's gonna be pretty empty. I've waited up to like 30 minutes to come in here before. So yeah, be aware of that. If you come here with a lot of time to kill, I recommend trying this like spot the difference because it is incredibly difficult and every like, I think it's every month they change this and although it's meant for kids, it's even difficult for adults and people are like posting the answers on Twitter, Japanese Twitter, because like they're so hard to find and they're kind of like the most annoying little thing. So I've spent like an hour trying this once and I don't know if I have the patience to do it this time, but maybe I'll start it a little bit, but these are fun. So, and each time you come, at least when I do, there's always a new one. Okay, so I've been to Saizaria probably at least 50 times, not gonna lie, and I've always wanted to try the gelato they have on the menu. I never did because it looked questionable, and today I'm filming, so I thought, why not give it a go? And I, guys, the texture of this is insane. Is this gelato? Look at that. Okay, it came out like this already, so I'm gonna give it a go. I guess it's vanilla flavored. I've had a lot of gelato in my life in Australia, in Europe. I've been to Italy. It did not taste like this. Like, it's basically melted. Like, I don't know if they gave this one to me and it was already sitting out, but I'm thinking this is just how it's meant to be. Flavor-wise, it's very sweet. Texture-wise, I don't like it because it's just like, it's like melted ice cream. This was 250 yen, so almost the same price as my whole main dish. So safe to say, I will not be getting this again and I don't even think I want to finish it. Maybe I have to go for the pudding. They had a Japanese pudding. I should have gone with the Japanese thing. All right.